So, Steve Brown is the Bachelor of Philosophy, Mental Health, First Aid Instructor, and Co-Founder of Wellbeing SOS, the School of Stress. Stevie's here tonight to speak about mental health training with his speech titled, Help for Mental Health. Please welcome Steve Brown, everybody. Is anyone over this side? Hello? Hello. Hmm. You guys can do better than that, can't you? Is anyone over this side? Hello? Hello. Yeah, they're better than you. Okay. Wellbeing SOS, it's a school of stress. And wellbeing is what I do. I make people feel good. We have a logo there. Yin and yang, maybe. Maybe a globe. Maybe fire and ice. It can mean anything it wants to mean to you. And the reason why I'm into well-being is because unfortunately, ladies and gentlemen, in the world that we're living in today, the world's very sad. Personally, I don't even watch the news anymore. If I want to find out something, I'll go onto YouTube. Because emotionally, I've been struggling. Homeless people in the streets, some people will step over them, as if they're not even there. Robberies, shootings, stabbings. I've been struggling emotionally. But there's more to life than emotion. There's economy. And right now, we're struggling with the economy too, aren't we? Where are we going with this? And also, we're struggling with ecology. Our planet that we call home. Pollution. The seas are full of plastic. And this is meant to be our home. So I'm trying to make a difference. Because that's all I can do. I can watch the news and I can look at America and look at Donald Trump and look at North Korea. Can I really affect those people? No. But what I can do is personally make a difference in my life. And I had to kind of, I had to face up to some things. Which meant I had to go counselling. I had to speak about some issues. I had loads of anxiety problems growing up. Which back then, was spoken about like I had a behaviour issue. So, I'm a young man. And I see another young man. And I'm anxious. But that displays as behaviour like this. But really, I'm scared. I was a scared young man. But no one would have thought I was scared. People would have thought, he's aggressive. He's violent. He's got an attitude. But I was struggling emotionally. I was also struggling with money and finance, with the economy. And I was also struggling with ecology. I never used to go outside. I never used to appreciate a sunrise or a full moon. But when I went counselling, these are the things that I started to discover and talk about because with the sun, you also get the moon. And if you're honest with yourselves, sometimes you have to face the dark side of life and sit there for a bit and feel comfortable in that space. Because if you can do that, what will start to happen is you'll be that light in the dark 
and you will feel yourself start to heal. So when I went to counselling and started to deal with the emotional part of my life, I also started to do more outside in nature. Take off my shoes, walk bare feet. It's called grounding now, I've learnt. I also looked at economy. What are my finances saying? Not very good at all. Credit cards, overdrafts. I looked great on the outside. But on the inside, I felt a bit shattered. But once I found that place, I started to put the pieces back together. So what you need to do is be selfish. At that point in my life, I had to take some time for myself. So I'm asking you, one thing that you can do today, could you spend an hour a day on yourself? Half an hour in the morning maybe, if you need to break it up. Half an hour in the evening. Just focusing on something that you want to do. Malcolm X said, or Malik al Shabazz, depending on how well you know the story. He said, the future belongs to those who prepare for it today. So what are each of you doing, personally, to influence your future positively? And it's all good and well saying, yeah, I've got work, I've got a bad relationship, my finances are terrible. I never have time. To, who else is going to change it except for you? That's what I did. I'm trying to create a business. Wellbeing SOS, it's a school of stress. What do we do? Finally, we're a limited company. We go into companies and we work around changing the world Looking at changing the world, ladies and gentlemen, because as we said at the beginning, the world's a sad place. Just the culture. When you're at work, is it okay to be upset at work? You're shaking your head. Talk to me. Your managers don't like it. Your managers don't like it. How does that make you feel? Well, when they created in the first place, it's all their fault, isn't it? <laughs> it is their fault. Does it make you feel like you want to... Be at work? Not really. There's lots of information on there. You can catch me up on my website later on, but basically, you can just have a little browse. Particularly passionate about acknowledging psychological, emotional and spiritual well-being, which is equally as important to physical well-being. You fall over, break your arm, you're going to get loads. Get well cards, get well soon. How's your arm? Sign it. Phone at work, I'm struggling. Bit of stress. Anxiety. Depression. Self-harm. Psychosis. And if you know psychosis, it's not very nice. You hear voices in your head. You know those voices that you hear in your head. That psychosis. But then I'm at work. Sorry, manager. Just dealing with a bit of psychosis over here. I'll just carry on like nothing's going on. Wellbeing SOS, the School of Stress says you can't di differentiate between the two. Wellbeing is wellbeing. Passionate about being academic, using evidence based research. Not just pulling things out of a hat. It's research. It's evidence-based. Some of the courses that we run. Introduction to well-being in the workplace. You have to actually introduce well-being to people. When you speak to managers, you might want to just tell them it increases performance which in turn is going to increase 
productivity. And when you're speaking to the people that hold the money, you tell them, it's going to increase profit as well. Managing diversity and unconscious bias. I think we should talk about that before well-being. Managing diversity and unconscious bias. Things where you're biased against people unconsciously, for age, for gender, for sexuality, and for race. At Wellbeing SOS, it's a safe space to talk about all these types of things because we need to address people individually. You heal the person, not the diagnosis. Spirituality and exercise within the workplace. Maybe a bit of desk yoga. Does that sound good, Nadia? How's that sound to you? Yeah. <laughs> Both of you, Nadia, as well. Some giggles. Yeah, it's good. Maybe some mindfulness. <coughs> Exercises if you don't know what to do. Maybe a bit of massage. Oh, sounds nice, doesn't it? And these are the things that we should be introducing in the workplace because personally, we spend most of our time, our life, that's what time is. Time is your life. And we spend most of our life at work. There's loads of things you can do with time. You can waste time, you can save time. What else can you do with time? Keep time. So what are you doing with your time? I'm a youth mental health first aider. And I'm also a youth mental health first aid instructor, which means I train people to be mental health first aiders as well. There's an initiative that there should be one youth mental health first aider in every school by 2020. Because if someone falls over, cuts their knee, you'll have a physical first aider running over trying to put a plaster on it. Or if someone has an anxiety attack, maybe one of the young people are self-harming in the toilets, who's going to deal with that? And we also do with challenging behaviour. That's just a favourite of mine because I was viewed as a young person who had challenging behaviour. Some information there of where you can find me. If you want to take a picture, feel free. And that's what I did with my time. That's what I've been doing with my time. That's what I'm going to continue to do with my time. So what are you doing with your time? Can you put your hand up for me? If you think that you could possibly spend an hour a day on yourself. Beautiful. Could you stand up for me if you could spend an hour a day doing that. Not for me, but for yourself. And that's good enough for me. And if you're lucky enough, you might end up like this young man now. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you.